What's up, everybody? Derek Anderson, the DA. And you know, I saw this post on Twitter today by Ethan Van Skyver, who you guys know, very famous, very well-known comic book artist. And uh, he had this to say a few years ago, a lot of hashtag strange women entered the comics biz and began exerting pressure on creative people about how we depicted and displayed the female form, Comics Gate Notice. And of course, they have this uh, article that he posts 12 lady superhero costumes redesigned by the ladies okay and it goes into this on this buzzfeed article gentlemen we need to chat because real talk you seem to have only the vaguest concept of how clothing functions and then when you go to this article it's showing like yeah black canary there you know hawk girl in this little outfit or whatever uh huntress and her outfit you know power girl and so on and so forth just like garbage looking <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just some of the worst, like, possible looking outfits, okay? And it comes from a place of not understanding whatsoever, like, the audience of people that are actually here to watch and read this material. They don't understand who these audiences are, and they don't give a damn, okay? They're saying, oh, look, this uh, She-Hulk looks kind of sexy. No, nah, we can't have that. Uh, you know, this Spider-Woman, yeah, she needs to look more like this, okay? Because you guys don't understand female bodies, etc., and so forth. So Ethan Van Skyver continued, he's talking about all of these various uh, artists, like uh, J. Scott Campbell was targeted multiple times by these strange women, forced to redraw covers that were sexualized, a uh, teenager, Riri Williams, fully clothed, her hip was cocked in one side, and constantly attacked for its fantasy cheesecake superhero art, all right, and that's a famous uh, picture everybody kind of knows of uh, Mary Jane Watson. Artist Frank Cho was driven off of his dream Wonder Woman cover assignment by the writer apparently possessed by the pressures exerted by hashtag strange women for drawing her too sexily. In my opinion, he wasn't even doing that, but Comics Beat mocked him anyhow. Uh, he says, I experienced the ripple effects of this while at DC many times. One example, Neurotics Natu Pink Skin wore her open top to display her cleavage for years. I was suddenly told to zip her up by editorial. Again, strange women. Uh, many more examples of this to be found in comics news sites all over Twitter, but I've got to get to work. I'm amused that SJWs and comics are reacting to my words with denials, showing isolated images of variant covers depicting beautiful women as if this never happened. My strange women <laughs> and my fellow assigned at birth males in comics, stop lying. Question them about this. They'll tell you, sorry, you can't beat off the comics anymore. My guys, they hate you and they hate comic books. Okay, I wanted to talk about this in the sense of this is kind of what's wrong in general okay with all of Hollywood where you have people that are coming in and they're trying to like recreate what has worked in the past okay there are rules to every genre I don't care what you're talking about right there's rules to popular entertainment or just entertainment of any kind all right and these rules are tried and true okay stuff has been tried in the past we've had multiple different types of artwork for comics and for novels and everything like that and you break these rules at your own risk let me show you what I'm talking about now check this out romance novels we all know what romance novels are and we all know all about the romance novel covers okay like guys like Fabio made a whole career off of that stuff and I want you to notice something about this look how these dudes look on these uh romance novel covers okay You'll go, and we're going to just kind of scroll through a few of them and notice every single dude that's on this cover, all right? You know, with the exception of that one or whatever. But you'll see, like, these guys are buffed out, and they're usually shirtless, okay? Every single one of them buffed out, maybe wearing a tank top. But most of these dudes on here, okay, look, shirtless, you know, with his chest all poked out, all right? This thing, I, it's like regular people recreate cheesy romance novel covers. Yeah, I guarantee you that this thing sold way better than this one over here, all right? You know, again, shirtless, chest poked out, all right? You can see it all throughout these, this one down here, all right? Shirtless, chest poked out. Shirtless, chest poked out, all right? Guys, shirtless, buffed out dudes, okay? That's every single one of these, shirtless, chest poked out. All of these guys, okay? Every last one of these uh, romance novel covers, this is what they show, all right? And why? Because they're catering to their audience, all right? And their audience are women that want to read this, and they're looking at these covers, and they're like, ooh-wee, I'm going to check this book out, okay? That's the way that works, all right? Now, when men see a cover like this, do you think we get all upset? Oh, this is sexism. Oh, look, look how sexy. This is terrible. You know, No, we just go, oh, shit, man, look at this dude. Man, I probably need to get in the gym, man. I probably need to start doing some push-ups or whatever, you know? Men think on this stuff in a different way, but then these chicks get in here and they show they show a picture like Psylocke, right? 
you know, with the with the with the classic Psylocke look. And it, oh my gosh, this is sexism. Oh, this is sexist. How dare you, you sexist pigs? Okay, that's what happens. This isn't what real women look like. Well, no, superheroes are supposed to represent like an ideal, okay? The ideal physique for a man and a woman that the opposite sex will mostly be attracted to, okay? That's what you're talking about. So no, this isn't what real women look like any more than this is what most real men look like, all right? Most real men don't look like, this guy's probably like a top 5% of male physiques, all right? But like I said, men are usually cool with this. We don't care. Oh, shoot, big buffed out cat with his shirt off. We ain't tripping, okay? Whatever, man. Hey, damn, I need to get in the gym. That's how we look at it, you know? But these chicks that are seeing comic book covers, oh, they freaking out and pulling their hair out. It's ridiculous. And this is really the thing that I wanted to kind of address, okay? Is that everything ain't for everybody, okay? Comic books are made for comic book fans. People that love comic books, people that have grown up reading comic books, this stuff is tried and true. Like I said, all of the different elements that you see within a comic book, this stuff has been tested out for years and years and years, and they have found, okay, this is the type of artwork that works for this. These are the types of stories that works. This is what we should be pushing and promoting, okay? And so all of that stuff has gone through the evolution evolutionary process of writing, drawing, the whole nine yards, all right? So when Van Skyver is saying here, this is another thing SJWs used to gaslight us with 10 or so years ago, shouldn't we be trying to make comics for everybody, right? So in other words, in the way I kind of equated to this other situation, we'll draw bodies and draw people that will not offend anyone. You know, we should be making this for everybody. And he says, no, we should be trying to make comics for people who like comics and buy comics. Chasing phantom audiences is what got us into this mess. This is where I was coming from. My response was, and this is how entertainment works, folks. Sci-fi for people who like sci-fi, okay? Action for people who like action. Rom-coms for people who like rom-coms. Westerns for people who like westerns, etc. and so forth. Everything ain't for everybody, okay? And that's kind of the point that I'm making when it comes to the artwork as well, all right? Like I said, comic books are a specific style of storytelling with specific rules and specific ways that this genre has worked. And it's intended to appeal to a certain audience, all right? So the way that the characters are drawn in the comic books are just as much a part of this art form as the stories or the characters themselves, all right? And as comics kind of, like I said, went through that evolutionary process, all kind of things were tried out, okay? They tried different ways of drawing women and men, all right? And certain things were kept and certain things were sent off to die in the wasteland. That's just the way this thing works, all right? So for decades and decades, this is how it was. Because guess what? Your audience for comic books were teenage boys and young men and this Psylocke, <laughs> right? This is what works for teenage boys and young men. This is what they get down with. So why do they draw the Scarlet Witch like this? Because this is what sells books, all right? This is what sells comic books to the intended audience. This is the kind of artwork and those types of stories is what keeps paying customers paying, okay? And when you try to go off in a different direction, it doesn't work. And we and see, we understand that with romance novels, don't we? We understand that with romance novels. Oh, these are going to have these certain types of covers, okay? You're going to have buffed out dudes, you know, seducing young women, looking all sexy and everything like that. And that's fine. We have no problem with that, okay? That's a part of what this genre is, okay? And that's where the, the, the customers, they tried all kinds of different types of covers and everything. And the hottest ones and the biggest ones, yep, these are the stories. These are the covers that have worked. So that's why they keep putting them out there, okay? These covers are the ones that worked, all right? So you got to understand that you can't just come in and just think, hey, I'm just going to reinvent everything and everything's going to be all right. No, I guarantee you, if you changed up all these romance novels, OK, and you put like a whole bunch of fat bastards on the cover, <laughs> like imagine this is the guys replacing Fabio, right? This dude is the guy that you're going to put on every single romance cover or somebody that looks like that, all right? Them joints ain't selling not a single book, okay? Because this isn't what the audience wants, all right? So try to understand that that's where this thing comes from. You have to cater to your audience at some point in time. In the uh, novel world, we call it writing to the market, okay? Well, who's your audience? Who are you making this content for? Oh, we're making this content for this particular group of people, all right? Okay, then that's your audience. Write to that audience and you'll be fine, okay? But the problem is with comic books, they try to like trap some other audience. Okay, we're going to start writing to this audience. Well, that's not your audience. That's never been the audience for comic books, okay? The people that you're writing to don't buy books. They don't buy this stuff. So why are you writing and trying to cater to them, all right? 
Again, it's like you might as well just put this dude on the cover of romance novels, all right? And the women are going to run screaming from it. I mean, yeah, you might get a couple of sales, but you're not going to get what you've gotten. Romance novels are the biggest genre in the novel business, okay? It's the number one genre by a long shot, all right? And why? Because they understand the rules, okay? They understand who their audience is, and they don't change for nobody, all right? The comic book genre, Hollywood in general, okay? Because this doesn't just stop with comic books. It goes throughout all of Hollywood. They would, they would do very, very well to understand this lesson. But anyway, folks, what do you think about this situation? I think Ethan Van Skyver makes an absolutely great point uh, once again. Uh, make comics for people who like comics and buy comics. That's going to get Hollywood out of the mess that they're in. That's going to be basically clear all of this stuff up and everybody will get back to making some money. But you guys go ahead, jump down in the comments. Give me your thoughts and your opinions on that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.